good morning to everyone our today's topic of study is threats to biodiversity now before we understand what are the different threats that biodiversity has let us first understand what is biodiversity if we split the word biodiversity into two what we get is bio which is life and diversity which is variability that is all the variety of species present on the earth constitutes biodiversity these variety of species it could be animals plants insects microorganisms or any living organism that is present on the earth so it could be a polar bear a rhino a penguin a flowering plant a fish or a coral reef or any species that comes to your mind now that you know what is biodiversity let us have a look into threats that biodiversity has these threats are habitat loss invasive species over exploitation man wildlife conflict pollution and diseases and climate change we will be considering each of these threats one after the another so coming to our first threat that is habitat loss habitat loss can be divided into two types these are habitat destruction and habitat fragmentation habitat destruction is complete elimination of a localized or regional ecosystem now this can happen by two types of activities these are either anthropogenic or natural activities anthropogenic activities that destruct the habitat are building tall buildings factories or agricultural land for that we require space and that space comes by destruction of certain habitat these are anthropogenic activities and when we talk about natural activities these are forest fires or volcanoes all of these activity can completely destroy a regional ecosystem now due to this complete elimination of a localized ecosystem this leads to total loss of biological ecosystem residing there by biological ecosystem i mean all the species all the flora and fauna residing there it gets destructed so this is habitat destruction now let us talk about what is habitat fragmentation it is a secondary effect of habitat destruction and this happens because of destruction of habitat patches due to which remaining population are isolated from their group say for example we construct a road in the mid of a forest or a grassland what happens is that the species residing there gets divided into two groups because their habitat is fragmented now since they are divided into two groups their reproductive ability will decrease and their number will decrease also sometimes these species in search of their group try to cross the road and in the attempt to cross the road sometimes vehicles hit them and they die unnoticed so habitat fragmentation is not a complete destruction of habitat but it is when the habitat gets fragmented into two second threat that we are going to talk about is invasive species now before we know what actually invasive species is let us first understand that what is an endemic species endemic species is a ecological state of a species being unique to a definite geographical location 
that means that this particular species is definite to a geographical location these are the actual inhabitants of an area these are the species that belong to that area these are the original native species of an area the original inhabitants for example lion tailed macaque is endemic to western ghats of south india Bucnania lanceolata is a tree which is endemic to western ghats of india polar bear is endemic to arctic region and banyan tree is endemic to india it should be noted that none of these species will be available at any place other than mentioned here so they are called endemic species so now then let us know what is invasive species invasive species is not native to a specific location and that is why they can grow outside their normal distribution though they might be native to certain areas but they have ability to grow outside their normal distribution they have tendency to grow rapidly and since they can grow rapidly these are also known as aggressive species these compete with the endemic species for resources this is the main point where invasive species they compete with the endemic species for the resources and the endemic species they are depleted for the resources this leads to loss of endemic species and spread of more invasive species invasive species are also reproductive more they reproduce more rapidly due to which their progeny grow faster also they are introduced by human activities often unintentionally these are also known as exotic species because they have arrived from somewhere outside environment now that we know what are invasive species we will look we will look at some examples of invasive species one among them is lantana camera which is native of south america this particular plant was brought by britishers as an ornamental plant to provide aesthetic look but now it is the most invasive plant that has taken over the country's forests india's many forest areas has been occupied by this plant which is known, known as lantana camera this plant is driving wild animals out for foraging since this plant has occupied most of the forest area this plant is not edible and so wild animals do not choose to eat this plant and so in search of food these animals they go out of the forest which is dangerous for example in bandipur national park which is in karnataka almost 60% of forest area is affected by lantana and the main threat due to this is that this particular plant hinders the growth of all the native vegetation and endemic species present in the forest taking our next example which is prosopis juliflora this particular plant is a native of mexico this plant is very famously known as gando bower in gujarati and we can see this plant growing very vigorously in many areas where nothing grows this plant was first introduced in 1877 in tamil nadu as a firewood species and later on it was introduced in kutch in 1960 this plant was introduced in kutch to make the barren land of kutch more green but 
since this plant can grow in any kind of harsh conditions like hot and dry weather low rainfall saline areas this plant was introduced in the bani area of kutch but the bani area of kutch is the worst affected bani area was an extensive grassland which is totally occupied by this particular plant now which is prosopis juliflora since this plant is not edible and it has thorns the animals do not opt to eat it and even the cows if they eat their jaws gets hurt so the cow breeds there have been replaced by the breed of buffaloes also this plant has no other proper use other than being a firewood species the whole lush green grassland of bani in kutch has been destroyed by this particular plant so grasslands are destroyed and so animals have no option left this third example is of maina common maina or indian maina which is native to asia it is among the list of 100 of the world's worst invasive species among the 100 species there are three bird species of which one bird is this which is known as indian maina this particular bird is though native of india it has spread all across the world these are insect eaters and so has been exported as pest control in many farms in several countries but they themselves have become pests threatening the existence of native birds in countries like israel what this birds do they uh, go into sites of nesting of other birds and if and occupy their area due to which the native birds are at threat so invasive species can also come in cute disguises a next threat is men wildlife conflict men wildlife conflict simply refers to the interaction between men and animal and due to that interaction there is a resultant negative impact on both men and their resources as well as animal and its habitat this is called men wildlife conflict now there are some main causes of a man wildlife conflict these causes are increasing human population as the human population is increasing it requires more space to survive so from where does this space come so comes the next cause which is habitat destruction of animals most of the forest areas are destroyed by human population so that human population can survive but that is actually destructing habitat of animals now since their habitat is destructed where they will go the animals have started when start entering livestock areas and urban areas so when they enter the livestock area wild animals compete with the livestock resources and also wild animals are dangerous for livestock animals and when they enter urban areas there are clashes between human and animal so there is negative impact on animals and human there are cases when animals have caused harm to human and humans have caused harm to animal just to protect themselves a very recent example of man wildlife conflict that was in news is elephant dying after eating crackers filled with pineapple this is an example of man wildlife conflict in place in kerala where this incident happened in that place usually people kill animals to protect their farms 
and filling the pineapple with cracker and giving the elephant was an example of how men tried to protect their land but this was a cruel instance and it came into limelight sooner this had a negative impact on the elephant which was pregnant another example is of nilgai nilgais are such animal that are they are of antelope family but they look like cow but they are not cow so these are also called nilgai which means blue cow nilgais are in a huge amount present in huge numbers in india so it is not a species even of any importance to government so government has given right to farmer to kill the nilgai animal if their farm is in danger because of nilgai because this nilgais they have started coming in urban areas and also they have entered into crop land and damaging the crop so there was a news in bihar where nilgais were buried alive in bihar but how much fair is that is a question to ask next threat is over exploitation over exploitation is also called over harvesting it is exploiting something continuously because of its importance in daily life when we as men know that this particular thing is very much important we try to collect this much and much and this leads to over exploitation so this refers to harvesting a renewable source to the point of diminishing return we harvest so much we collect it so much that that particular a particular resource exists no more that is called over exploitation continued over exploitation can lead to the destruction of the resource so what kind of natural resources are over exploited these are wild medicinal plants grazing pastures game animals fish stocks forests and water aquifers all of these are continuously exploited a wide variety of medicinal plants are over harvested along with many of animals too causes of over exploitations are mainly human based first is overpopulation since our population is increasing our demands are increasing our demands are increasing that lead leads to more craving for resources and since we need more resources we exploit the resources another example cause is over grazing of livestock species for example consider in a grassland cow species are grazing continuously day by day so what will happen that the grass grassland that exists there will not be there any more due to over grazing because the grass species is not getting time to grow so because of that the grass species is said to be over exploited and this this leads to extinction of the species third is high demand of certain species in the market for example sandalwood some species have very high demand in the market and since it has a high value it is overly exploited for example sandalwood fourth is absence of an alternate form of resource some resources are such that there is no other resource available if we want to use in the place of that resource so there is no alternative so then that particular resource is collected again and again and 
that leads to over exploitation and extinction of that species and fifth cause is poaching which we will be considering in our next slide these are some of the examples of over exploitation sandalwood as we know is known for its aroma is known for its importance in religious activity overfishing which happens because of huge demand of non vegetarian food sarpaganda is a plant which is of utmost importance in many diseases like hypertension now let us understand what is poaching poaching is a kind of over exploitation it is illegal activity of hunting or killing and both plants and animals are poached for their various parts which are valuable here are some examples for example tiger skin drosera species drosera species are species of insectivorous plant they do not grow everywhere but they are poached for some reason these only grow in muddy areas or in damp areas and these are also in very few numbers but these are poached for its look coral reefs coral reefs reefs as we know are present in the base of the oceans they are very beautiful creatures these are often poached for making fashion jewelry beard is poached for its skin and for the bile juice in its gall bladder which is used by many chinese medical practitioners and for this tusk of elephant elephants which has ivory present and ivory is a very valuable material which is used for carving and which has a very great carving properties and used for jewelry and many other purposes now coming to our fifth threat which is pollution pollution is the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance which has harmful or poisonous effect that is any substance which is present in the environment having harmful effects is termed as pollution now pollution are of three types air pollution soil pollution and water pollution air pollution is caused by solid and liquid particles and certain gases that are suspended in the air these particles and gases often come from anthropogenic sources that is man made sources like car and truck exhaust factories burning of waste in landfills dust natural sources like pollen that is pollen from flowers mold spores fungal spores volcanoes and wildfires but most of the air pollution is anthropogenic that is the source is anthropogenic and we are experiencing air pollution on a daily basis soil pollution or soil contamination as part of land degradation is caused by the presence of xenobiotic chemicals or other alteration in natural soil environment so when there is an alteration in the natural soil environment due to chemicals then it is called soil pollution the industrial waste excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides garbage pollution leaching and chemicals these all lead to soil pollution and last coming to water pollution it is the contamination of water bodies like lakes rivers oceans usually as a result of human activity things that cause water pollution is discharge of domestic and industrial effluent waste leakage 
from water tanks, marine dumping, radioactive waste and atmospheric deposition leaching of pesticides. These days pesticides and fertilizers are used on a used on a huge amount which gets deposited in the land and due to rainfall all those pesticides they reach the water bodies where the water bodies gets contaminated which is obviously going to harm the animals flora and fauna residing there so pollution produces polluting gases like sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide methane carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen since as excessive polluting gases are produced these leads to highly polluted environment in which we are living this is bound to cause diseases to humans animals and both can suffer from a number of problems when we talk about humans there is always an increase increased risk of heart attack coughing breathing problems irritation of eyes and nose and throat air pollution can also cause worsening of existing heart problems asthma and other lung complications and i think we are on a daily basis experiencing such problems when we talk about animals they too can suffer from a number of health problems due to air pollution including birth defect reproductive failure and diseases when reproductive ability is decreased their number is going to get decreased and pollution is related to climate change remember the relation which we are going to explain in the next slide so our next threat is climate change as i said in the previous slide climate change and pollution both of this are related to each other so before we understand what a climate change is we need to know what is greenhouse effect so greenhouse effect it is the natural process that warms the earth surface in order to survive on earth we require certain warmer temperature environment due to which all the living organisms can survive on the earth this particular process is important to keep the earth's atmosphere warm for making it favorable for the growth of life forms now let us have a look at the natural greenhouse effect this is the earth's surface this is the atmosphere and this red portion is the amount of greenhouse gases what happens is that when the sun's rays fall on the earth more of this heat is escaped into the space but some part of the heat remains there in the atmosphere and the gases that trap this heat in the atmosphere are the greenhouse gases these greenhouse gases are co2 and 2o that is carbon dioxide nitrogen oxide and methane these greenhouse gases are very important to maintain the natural greenhouse effect because these gases when the sun rays fall they trap some amount of heat whereas more of the heat it gets escapes into the space but the amount of heat that is trapped is very much important for the growth of life forms if this heat is not trapped the earth would have been much much cooler and not favorable for the life forms to survive so then let us understand what is a greenhouse and why is it called a greenhouse effect greenhouse is a house made up of glass that is constructed of glass where sunlight enters inside and keeps the environment warmer it 
allows the sunlight to get inside and keep the inside area warmer due to which the plants inside can survive properly. This is greenhouse and since this effect works similarly like a greenhouse, this is known as greenhouse effect and this is very important for maintaining the temperature of the earth. But now let us see what has happened because of human induced activities. Now we term it as human enhanced greenhouse effect. This is the earth's surface. This area is filled up of all the greenhouse gases that is the red zone that you can see is all the greenhouse gases. How these greenhouse gases has increased because of pollution. Remember in the previous slide we had mentioned that due to pollution there is an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide, nitrogen and all and due to those gases now these gases has increased in huge quantity. As this greenhouse gases has increased, now what is happening? The sun falls over the earth, sun rays falls over the earth's crust. So, but there is so much of greenhouse gases, so more of the heat is trapped inside and less heat escapes into the space. So, since more heat is trapped, the earth's atmosphere is becoming more and more hotter. More heat energy is trapped inside on the earth. Because due to pollution, the gases have increased in quantity. This is called human enhanced greenhouse effect. So, this greenhouse effect leads to global warming. Now we know what is greenhouse effect. That the amount of greenhouse gases has increased and that has led to the increased heat energy, increased heat on earth which has led to global warming. Since heat has increased, the overall globe is facing a huge warming. Global warming is the slow increase in the average temperature of Earth's atmosphere. Since the heat energy trapped is more, average temperature of Earth's atmosphere is increasing slowly which is known as global warming. Now understand this concept. When heat is energy, heat is energy, so more of heat energy is present on the earth because of which when you add energy to any system changes is going to happen because and because all the systems in global climate system are connected adding heat energy will cause global global climate as a whole to change all the systems are interconnected with each other so when heat energy is added the overall global climate as a whole is going to change this we can understand by the diagram shown here in the center there are greenhouse gases which is trapping energy since now there is more greenhouse gases more energy is trapped the outside yellow circle is the warmer atmosphere since more energy is trapped, the outer atmosphere is warmer. Now this has further conse consequences. As the atmosphere is warmer, the oceans have become warmer. There is melting of snow and ice. There is changing condition for plants and animals. And there is more evaporation. All of these are interconnected in one way or other. And these have further consequences like warmer oceans will lead to stronger storms and rising sea level. It will also lead to more evaporation. Similarly, more evaporation has more precipitation in some places, will have stronger storms, will have more droughts and wildfires. 
Changing conditions for plants and animals will have changing seasonal patterns. Obviously, it is going to affect plant and animal present. Shifting ranges and migration. Similarly, melting snow and ice is going to bring a rise in sea level. Earth's, Earth will absorb more energy. And also it is going to have some changes in the patterns of plants and animals. So all of this system is interconnected with each other which is going to bring climate change. So now we can define climate change which refers to significant long term changes in the global climate. Long term changes that are present in the global climate because of Starting is pollution. Because of pollution, there was increasing polluting gases. Because of increasing polluting gases, more heat energy was trapped. More heat energy is trapping. And this leads to human enhanced greenhouse effect. This is leading to global warming. Global warming is leading to climate change. Let us take some very decent example that we are facing on a daily basis due to climate change. First is the smog in Delhi. Delhi smog as we know is the polluted air that is present all over Delhi. Many reasons have been attributed to it, some of which are burning of agricultural land, piling of waste and huge number of industries. Another example is yellowing of Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is yellowing due to a sulfur dioxide gas which is released by a refinery industry in Mathura nearby. We all know what what is Panda. Panda totally survives on bamboo forests. But human beings have almost destructed the bamboo forest leading to panda as an endangered species. Another example is Amazon forest fire. Many reasons had been attributed, some of which were cutting of forest trees leading to more increase in heat energy and the forest fires were initiated. Another example is of Sundarban tiger. Because of climate change, the ocean area, the sea level is increasing because of which many of the lowland area where tigers are present, it is getting covered with water which is threatening the existence of tiger. Another example is sparrows. I don't remember the last time I saw a sparrow. It has almost gone out, almost got extincted from the urban areas. Now, every household has these, use this every day, ACs, fridge, mobile, laptops and many more electronic devices. Similarly, every person sees this scene every day that is industrial affluent discharge, air pollution by vehicles and industries. But we use it every day, we see this every day, but we are not able to contribute to bring a change in these conditions because we have already become a part of it. But the point to understand is that climate change is not a far off problem. It is already happening here. It is already happening now. So we as a citizen, what we can do from our side to reduce this effect? Apart from reducing and recycle, we can opt for planting trees.
if you plant tree you can see that the growth is exponential the plant may grow to a complete tree in maybe 10 years 20 years maybe 30 years 40 years or 50 years but it would be a it would be the best investment because see the growth it would be an exponential growth and eventually this will restore biodiversity because once the tree is a big tree once the plant has become a big tree it will have all kind of insects and, and birds and animals hovering around it so ultimate we will be restoring the biodiversity thank you